Hi, I'm Anita Potter from Anita Potter Productions, and today we're going to go over automation lanes in Reaper. Now, this was a request a while back, and I just now finally got to it. Um, you can do all sorts of automation in your Reaper session. You can automate the volume which is um, one thing you, do, you would do a lot with. Um, you can turn um, effects on and off like I have here this little bluish purple lane and you can also automate plugins which is other than bypassing an effect I haven't really actually tried doing it so we're gonna we're gonna look at that. Um, the one that I use the most is the trim volume. As you can see here, when we find one that doesn't have a volume envelope, you're going to click this trim button and you'll have the track envelopes is volume, pan left, pan right, volume pre-effects, pan left pre-effects, pan right pre-effects, trim volume, which is a whole new thing that I've not ever used, and mute. You can also automate your send envelopes. Send volume, send pan, send mute. And seeing as the only plugin that's on this track is EQ, any um, EQ points you put on there can be automated. I have a high pass, a band, a Q frequency band two, band three, and band four completely I think that's, you can completely bypass the effect. And there's a setting for wet. I haven't used that yet. So usually I just do volume automation and turn things on and off. So some of this will be new to me. I've not ever messed with um, the send envelopes because usually I send it to where I want it to go or I make a track just for that specific or vocal. I have not like automated a send, like I wanna send like say a guitar to share the same reverb as a vocal just for a little bit and then send it back. I haven't, I haven't done any of that. But it might be worth looking into in the future. So today I'm gonna to go, the ones that I know are trim volume and I've done, I've done panning envelopes but I usually draw those in left and right. I'm not, I haven't tried using any of those, so I'm, I'm not sure if I actually ever saw the left and right ones before, because usually it was just panning. So I, I'm not sure, we will, we will check that out. But seeing as we're gonna start with the volume. Now, when you click the volume, it'll give you this green line here and I use a shortcut that um, gives me four control points. So I'm gonna drag out a selection, like I'll just select this area here, and I'll, you'll click on the green line. In the actions panel, see if I can find it. Actions, it's under my custom actions. So I'm gonna, let me see, where is it? Oh, it's not even in here. It's not a custom action. My apologies. I gave it a custom key command. So I'm going to show action list. And I'm going to search. Let me see. Points. No, maybe that's not it. Four. Maybe it's a number. Envelope. Insert four envelope points at time selection. I gave it a shortcut control alt and then my number pad on the right side of my keyboard four so you can add that in here to this box and then you can I don't think I think it automatically saves it so that's what I did and this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit control alt four and I've got four envelope points that I can turn up and turn down whichever way I want and I wonder if I can like I'm gonna solo that 
and then see if we can hear a difference when I do, because I've got it up right now. You can turn it up, turn it down, whichever way you want. You can even like draw in a bunch of points and like go crazy. But that's just basically the volume. I'm gonna bypass the trim volume on this. And if there are no points, it'll clear the lane out. And there's that. We can also do the EQ. Let me load the FX up on this. Here's our EQ. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the trim again. And I wanna see like band three. So I'm gonna click frequency band three, clear that out, get this other bluish purple line. I'm gonna just go ahead and do my control alt four. Oh, that moves. Ah, okay, so that moves the frequency left or right. I was thinking it was gonna move it up and down, so I think I need a different um, a different item. Let's delete that real quick. Bypass it. Hit the trim button again. Let's see. Gain band three. That's what I think I needed. That's this. Uh, pinkish looking line. So here we go again, control alt four to add four points. If we click the lane first, we can do it. Now let's see. Yep. Gain it up, gain it down. Might be helpful if you wanted a little more control just in certain spots in the song. If it's poking its head out too much and interfering with other instruments, you can certainly gain it down. Or if it's not doing enough in certain areas like the chorus, it's getting lost in the chorus, you can do it gain it up so you can still you can hear it but it's not messing with other stuff so that's good to know clear this lane out look at something else okay what else do we got on here now seeing as it's only got the eq we can like it'll just that's just the eq but if you have a um, track that has a lot of uh, plugins on it like I'm gonna go down to the vocals. I've got an EQ, de uh, I think that's a compressor and another de -esser. So it's gonna come up with, when I hit the trim button, the window's gonna be massive with lots and lots of stuff. You got your track volume envelopes, your send envelopes, the EQ, your first instance of the de -esser. then this right here for um, the Rough Rider 3, and then your second instance of your de -esser. You can bypass, you can turn it on, turn it off. You can automate the look ahead, the detection, threshold, range, mode, monitor it. It's just a lot of, a lot of things that I have never really messed with. I've only ever done like I said, turning things on and off or doing volume and panning. So I want to look at the panning. See, this one says pan. Do the other ones have that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm wondering. Let me, let me go back up to the sense. It's a stereo track. Yep, pan left, pan right, and then left and right. But if you go to a mono track, it's just the one pan. I did not know that. Now I do. And now you do. So this is fun. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can go crazy like, um, what is this? This is uh, volume on, on, on this section right here. Solo it. Oh, let me go back and press play so you can hear it. you turn it off because if you you can like bypass it real quick so it doesn't affect it you can hear the difference
it, within the track I wanted that that part to be louder because it's the first practically the first thing you hear in the track so I wanted to volume automate that up and then back down and you could do all sorts of stuff I usually leave things like automation until the end um, or if in certain cases you hear something straight away and it's like okay I need to go ahead and volume automate this you absolutely go do that there are no rules there's there's no hard and fast rules just volume automation I it's it's tedious but necessary I tend to wait to the end to do it unless there's a need for it right away so that's basically your trim envelopes your volume panning let me actually let's see the panning on a mono because I haven't done the stereo panning oh for the heck of it let's look at it on a base your panning envelope will be this yellow orangey thing and right now it says it's in the center drag it up it's 100% left drag it down it's 100% right get it back to the center oops hold shift there we go that slows it down so you can actually get there and some things that I do I, I'll hit control out for here but you can zoom in and I can shift left click points it as long as your snapping is enabled you can snap it to whatever and I'm not going to go and do all that and I'll I'll select every, oops every other one and then I'll drag them up I missed one drag that up oops that's not even it fine it's this one ha. drag that up and then I'll take I'm gonna have to make this bigger in order to like grab that second point maybe there we go and then I'll grab all of these shift left click try to hover over the point when it turns into that cross arrow make sure I got them all grab this one and then I'll drag those all the way down it's not gonna sound very good because as well you don't really want your base going like this well un unless you want to so let's solo that real quick let me turn the snapping off so I can get my playhead over here yep sometimes you can't tell especially if it's like really quick Although it probably would have been better to line it up with the beginning of the notes. But that's okay. We are experimenting. Dull points, delete, bypass. And that's it. Volume, panning. I've got an effect I turned off and on. Let's find that track, which is right here. I'm going to escape out of my time selection right here. So I'm going to, I have this track here called uh, Busy Guitar Reverb that I sent, uh, how did I send it? It's a DI track. I sent it pre-fader post effects and then turned the volume all the way down on that track. So that I can trigger a reverb. But I only wanted to trigger the reverb in this one spot. So that's what I did. Click on that. Now the one thing that I remember when I was mixing this song originally is that there are two bypasses in here. So I was like clicking the first one thinking, oh, okay, it'll bypass the whole plugin. It didn't do anything. I was just driving myself nuts and I'm sitting there looking and I'm looking and then all the way down here is the actual bypass one I'm not sure what this bypass is for it didn't really do what I was looking for so I didn't search into it any further but the one down here is the one that works so if you got like something that says bypass on it twice and you want to bypass the plugin completely check them both and to make sure that which one is doing what you need it to do so 
that that's the one thing so show the lane this is bypassed until here all the way up is bypass all the way down it's on and then it's bypassed again I wonder why that was all the way down anyway that's how you do it and let's solo that particular guitar we'll come over here press play And then it's off. Otherwise, the tempo delay will keep going until it completely trails out in the plug-in. And that's when you would bypass it if you don't want it muddying up your mix or you're hearing something that's like, what the hell is that? It's your plug-in. So that should be all there is to doing um, uh, envelopes in Reaper. There are ways you can draw it in. I just haven't done it. I, I don't have enough control with the mouse to draw to draw it in. You can do it on the fly when you're recording some of it. Um, I haven't done that either because like I said, I don't have enough I don't have enough mouse control for that. I'll I'll click points in where I need them. So how have you used envelopes in Reaper? Do you do things other than trimming the volume? messing with EQ points, uh, bypassing uh, plugins. What do you use it for? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.